gentlemen, welcome to Dark Horse Dramatist's fifth annual Tales from the Script. And it is with great pleasure and privilege we get to bring to you eight short plays in one evening. And just how do you do eight shows in one evening? Well, it's no easy task. Um, as our old friend Billy used to say, that's Billy Shakespeare, the play is the thing. And tonight we're keeping the emphasis on the play itself, the written words and the actor's interpretation. So you may see that our sets are a bit sparse. Uh, but we have just the essentials tonight, so we can strike quickly and bring to you a short play. We have so much theater for you folks in one evening, we don't even have time for introductions. So, on your handy dandy little program here, you might have to share with a neighbor, um, we actually have a list of the plays in the order that they're being seen. I uh, apologize for slightly hard to read a letter. Um, but uh, you can, you're welcome to take this home with you and, uh, and then peruse this. Uh, if you liked any of the work that you see, make sure you tell a friend. And right on the back, our website, darkhorsedramatist.com. Our next show coming up in February, Right to the Heart, Plays on Love. Um, so we do three festivals a year. It's a great uh, pleasure that we get to perform right here at the Saturday Playhouse. Um, and OK, a few words, uh, mandatory. Exits, in case of emergency, are located right behind you, to the right and the left of the theater. If you have a cell phone, please silence it now. Um, there will be some actors entering and exiting from the center row, so you just might want to watch yourself. And uh, let's see, there might be some gunshots um, this evening, so if you hear a gunshot, I promise you it is just pretend. Uh, let's see, oh, and there is some profanity this evening, a few four-letter words. Uh, nothing you kids haven't heard on the school bus, I promise. So, uh, without any further ado, uh, enjoy the show and thanks for coming. excitement happens in your life when you cobble. Boots and shoes, shoes and boots, day after day after day. Even life beyond my humble work does not hold much of a friend. My marriage is agreeable enough, lasting these last 30 years, bearing three wonderful sons. I come home from work to a pleasant supper, sit by a nice fire, and then off to bed. My wife keeps me happy, but not enthused. <laughs> yeah. A beast or a brute that runs amok, that can certainly disrupt the monotony. I believe my favorite was the monster. He was not named Frankenstein, you know. <laughs> no, the doctor who, who created him. His name was Frankenstein. The monster was just the monster. Or maybe Frankenstein's monster. But anyway, with the monster, you did not have to worry about being bitten. Count Dracula, the werewolf, or oh, bee biters. Not so much the monster. Well, he could tear you apart from limb to limb, but you didn't have to worry about his teeth. <laughs> Another reason I preferred the monster. I got an idea of how he felt. He was sewn together from pieces of the dead. 
To that I can relate. A numbness can take over the body, a lack of feeling, an absence of sensation. Uh, it, it, it's just no one's fault. It just happens from doing the same thing day after day after day. But just when you get comfortable in that sleep-like consciousness, something comes along to make you want to live again. Something like a mad devil bent on destruction. Oh, that can reanimate this old corpse. <laughs> Sometimes I like to waddle the countryside imagining myself on an adventure of storming the castle or searching the forest or perhaps burning down a windmill. <laughs> <laughs> makes me smile, makes my heart beat faster. And then I go home, prepare for another day's work and family. You know, Count Dracula once turned into a bat right before my very eyes. Ooh, away he flew. It was very disconcerting. Also very stimulating. Another time I was so close to the wolf man, I could touch his fur. It was very coarse. Oh, so very soft and delicate. That unholy tickle, it's a feeling that never leaves my fingertips. Ah, but listen to me rambling on about the good old days. <laughs> uh, it's been ten years since we've had any monster trouble. It's a long time to sit in the quiet, day after day after day. Holds and shoes. Sometimes. In the dark of the night, I wish I could hear a scream pierce the shadows. We would all take up our torches and gather in the village square, crowded together in a hot pack. Ah, we would spend the sweat and apprehension of our neighbors, our fear fueling our excitement. Out we would go, out to catch the monster. Ah, oh, that wish, that desire, that dream. <laughs> That is why I still keep a pitchfork by my door. <laughs> uh, search every ravine, every crevice. 